With this video, we reached a crucial point in this course. So far, we discussed many different ways of drawing, but all of those previous tools were automatically creating anchor points. What does that mean? Well, if I use the pencil tool, for example, once I draw and let go, I can see all of those little points placed along the path that I drew. This is the same with the brush tool as well. When I draw and let go, once I select it, I can see all of those points on the path. Although majority of the drawing tools will create these anchor points automatically, there is one tool called the pen tool, which will need you to manually place each anchor point down. And that's why I like to refer to it as the manual drawing tool of Illustrator. So just to show you the difference, if I click, that places down an anchor point. If I click again, there's another anchor point and I could draw straight lines that quickly, but I can also click and drag to create curved points in every direction. The reason I said that we got to a crucial point in this course is because this tool is probably the most popular and most commonly used tool amongst illustrator artists and designers. And the reason for that is because being able to manually place in each anchor point, you can be much more precise. And once you master this tool, you can be very efficient and draw amazing things very quickly. So you might ask why bother learning the other tools then if this is so amazing? Well, the reason why I mentioned the pen tool only now is because this is probably the most difficult one to learn. I even have a separate course about mastering this tool, which I recommend to you in case you want to really dive deeper into it and learn every little trick about it. But I'm going to still explain to you a lot about it here in this video and the next one. And we are going to keep using this tool throughout the course from now on, because you can't say that you know how to work with Illustrator without actually mastering the pen tool. Of course, there are users I know that still doesn't have a proper understanding, a well-developed skill to work with this tool and still can do an amazing things. So don't get me wrong, but believe me, this is a skill that really worth the time that you are going to invest to practice it. And the good news is that there is a pen tool also in Photoshop and InDesign. So if you are learning those applications as well from me, you will definitely get some videos in those courses as well, mentioning how to work with it. Now in this file, I prepared already a couple of things for you that will explain things that you need to know before you start working with the pen tool. Like here on the top, you have the anatomy of parts that I call it. It's actually a collection of terms and definitions that we use when we talk about parts in general. And here's already something that you might want to remember. On the left, you can see a smooth point, which has curves on both its sides. And here, that is a corner point where there are straight, sharp lines coming on both sides from it. It is also good to familiarize yourself with all the different types of cursors that you will get when you are working with the pen tool. So those little icons next to it mean always something like whether you are starting a new path if you see that little star or a circle when you are just about to close a path or the diagonal line or that forward slash when you are continuing or connecting to an existing path or the little triangle which will mean converting a smooth point into a corner point or vice versa and then there's also a list of the settings that i prefer to use these you will find in the preferences under selection and anchor display. If you are a PC user, it will be under edit menu preferences and then selection and anchor display. And you can see here is exactly that part that I'm uh, showing you in this artboard. So that's the settings that I use. Now, some of the options that you see here, you might not get if you are using an older version of Illustrator like CS6 or CS5. But these are the options you will see if you are a Creative Cloud user. So even if you are not on this version, try to get as close to the options that I'm using here as you can. Now, of course, there's many other options that can affect the pen tool, but this is mainly the part that primarily applies to working with the pen tool. 
And last but not least, as always with everything in Illustrator and in Adobe products, you have to also remember the shortcuts, what they do. The Alt and Option keys, they actually have two different rows. They can either convert anchor points or they can also split handles while the shift key can draw straight horizontal and vertical lines or even diagonal lines and then the command or control can select and move anchors and handles around now i'm going to show you this exactly the reason i just read through it because remember it's all written down here so if you are ever in doubt what they do and how to use the shortcuts you can find the reference here on this artboard but now let's move on to the actual exercise that I prepared here. So you will find this other artboard where I have four different exercises, starting with straight path segments, and then moving on to more curved and alternating straight and curved paths. So as you move down from the top, it gets more and more difficult. So let me select the pen tool that's Pressing P on the keyboard will take you immediately to the pen tool, but you can also find it here on the toolbar. And I don't have to set up anything else on the options bar because I'm going to continue drawing the already available parts here. So I am just going to click on this last point here and notice the cursor already tells me that if I click there, it will continue drawing that path. That's exactly what I want, so I'm going to click on that. And notice that I already get the smart guide. So when I move around, I see these purple lines appearing. Again, that's something you can always turn off if you don't want it. It's under the view menu, smart guides. I like to keep it on, it helps me while I'm drawing. And I can just move up here and immediately I get a guide that helps me to get the same height as the previous lines. So remember, all you need to do for straight lines, just simply click. Then go down again, wait for the smart guide and click. And I will just continue doing the same thing. You might say that, oh, so that's all there is to it. It's very simple, this tool. Well, drawing straight lines, as I said, it is simple. But here's a thing that's already useful to remember. If you hold down the command or control key and click anywhere on the artboard, you deselect the current path and then you can continue drawing another one. So let's continue this one here. Now I'm going to click on that and then I will go up here halfway. You see that we had two triangles and exactly the same distance of those two triangles is going to be one semicircle. So I'm going to click and drag here and notice how I'm creating handles. So the center point is the anchor and from that two handles are coming out in two directions. Notice that they are symmetrical. I mean, the size is the same. So when I make it smaller or bigger, they are always going to be the same size by default. And in this case, that's all we need. But to make sure that this circle will look nice, I will also hold down the shift key, which can keep these handles horizontal. And that helps me to get a really nice symmetrical circular shape here. So when I see that it's roughly the size I need, first let the mouse go, then the shift key. And then you can just move your pen further out and find that point where you need to place it down. You don't have to be extremely precise, just roughly get it into a symmetrical size. And then all you need to do is simply click. Now, when you click that created a corner point, which means that the next line is at the moment going to be a straight line again. Now to make it curved, all you need to do again is to remember to click and drag. And if you want to keep it nice and symmetrical, hold down the shift key. And there you go, there's the next segment. And then we can keep continuing doing the same thing. Now let me command click again outside so we can try this other one here. Now the trick here is that these are straight and curved path segments alternating. So there's a curve, then a straight line, uh, and then another curve, and then a straight line. So what you need to do here is when you continue this, first come up to the top, just like before, click and drag. You can hold down the shift key once again if you want, but it's up to you. You can draw different curves as well, but try to keep it similar to the previous ones. So I'm going to draw it like that. But notice that when I want to go down, it doesn't give me a straight line. 
it tries to continue the previous path with a nice continuous curve going down. So that is why we have two handles and that's why they are going in the opposite directions because those handles are trying to force me to create a nice continuous curve no matter in which direction I'm going. As you can see, it's always going to have a continuous smooth transition from the previous segment into the new segment, as long as the handles are symmetrical. But if I want to continue with a straight line, I have to click on the anchor point that I created, just click once on that, which will remove that additional handle. And now I can draw any normal straight line. So I can click at the bottom, and then continue doing the same thing as a pattern. So I can click and drag. Remember to click on the last anchor point in the middle and then go down and click. So once again, click and drag. Then don't forget to click in the middle on the anchor point to remove that handle, which allows you to draw freely, even a straight line. Once you know what to do, this shouldn't be too difficult, but you still need to practice. But then we arrive to the last exercise here where we have curved path segments but changing directions. Now, it doesn't seem that difficult, but it will be much more trickier than the previous ones. So once again, I click on that point to continue and come up to this part here where I can click and drag. Now, so far it's the same as what we had in the previous exercise and almost the same as the one above that. But once I have that, it's not enough to just click here because once you click on it, it removes the handle, you have to go down and there, not just simply click, but click and drag again, which in turn can give you another completely different curve to the previous one. So it changes direction completely, it's not continuing the previous one. When I let go, you can see that's the shape. Now, when I want to go further up, once again, the reason why it doesn't look good at the moment is because there's again a free handle which is not necessary so I click on the last anchor point again and then I can go up and click and drag and continue the same pattern so in this case you actually have to always go back and click on the last anchor point once your curve is ready so you can click on it and then continue drawing like that but here's another way that you can draw these type of curves. If you click and drag and create that part, you can then also hold down the Alt key and just quickly drag the handle back to the center point to the anchor. Once again, I can do the same thing here. Hold down Alt and drag it back. It's up to you which one you prefer. Both ways are good. Just simply clicking on the last anchor point or holding down the Alt key and drag back the free handle that you don't need. Now to really get used to working with the pen tool, I would like you to finish these patterns and continue them all the way until you reach this guide here. So if you are doing it well, it will look something like this. So continuing all the way there. Don't worry if it doesn't exactly match up there. As you see, even I wasn't perfectly uh, repeating the same sizes. But as soon as you pass that finish line, you probably will have a really good understanding of how to do each of these different path segments. It might seem like a simple exercise, but make sure you don't skip this because in the next video, we will take all that we've learned here and apply it to much more complex drawings. Let me just give you a peek. Here's a few of them, but there's even more in this file that I prepared. So only go to the next video if you feel comfortable and you're very sure about the techniques I explained in this one.